You're listening to Praying with Power and Purpose. Hello, dear ones, and welcome to another episode of Praying with Power and Purpose. This is Z from ZariBanks.co. Hope you are having a wonderful Thursday, November 17, 2016. I want to give a shout out to Miss Rachel Renee Smith of Rachel Renee Live, Rachel Renee dot Live. Um, she has a book launching today that is called Dear Husband. So go ahead and go to her website, check her out, and wish her a happy and blessed birthday. Happy birthday, Rachel. Um, let's go ahead and pray and give thanks to the Lord. And then I want to jump in on today's topic. The title of this episode is called, I mean, look, I wrote it down today so I can remember to stay on topic. It is called the perfect response to loss or calamity. And if you could guess, it has to do with the, it's like the unopen letter response to the crybaby protesters who are upset because Donald Trump is now the um, president elect of the United States of America, but it's specifically aimed at believers and those who are looking and seeking after knowledge and wisdom, right? Lord, we just thank you. We come before you. We honor you. We glorify you. We praise you for revelation. We praise you that your spirit is just flowing and outpouring in this earth and especially in the na- in the nation right now. We just thank you that we have the opportunity to participate with you, not miss out on anything as long as our eyes and hearts and minds are seeking after you because you told us in Jeremiah that if we did seek you with all of our hearts, we would find you. And so I just thank you, Lord God, that in this season of 61 days of prayer 2016 that I've been seeking you and you have not failed to show up properly and in great great abundance. I thank you, Lord God, that I hasn't seen or ear heard the wonderful things that you have in store for me and all those who are seeking you. I thank you, Lord God, that the wealth of the wisdom and the blessings and the provision and everything that you're pointing out right now is just so abundant, so lavish, so magnificent. It's a real taste of what kingdom life is like. And I just pray that all those who are listening to this that are not experiencing it, decide to go after everything that you're releasing like crazy and those who are already experiencing it remember to testify 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 because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony we give you praise honor and glory yahweh most high yeshua the lamb of god and ruach our very very best friend that friend that sticks closer to a brother we love closer than a brother we love you lord we love you love you love you lord love you lord love you lord All right. I have a worship webinar. This is um, part two on Saturday, November 19th at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you would like to come, go to zm7academy.us right there on the homepage and register for that. It is free, but you do have to register so I can put you on my email list. Um, But it's going to be very, very, very good. That is a change of time if you've already registered. So please note that it is a change of time. It's an hour earlier because um, one of the people that I'm in a season of prayer with for 61 days of prayer for 2016, um, we start at 6 p.m. and we want to be consistent. We've just broken through that 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 area of prayer where everybody in the spiritual realm recognizes us as a covenant unit and so you know like it's at the place where acceleration kicks in and all the blessings and all that stuff and the answer prayers start coming quick 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 so it's really exciting and I don't want to be the one who gets us out of that momentum right you know momentum in the spirit is powerful if you've never experienced it you probably are not somebody who walks in miracles on a regular basis but get to that place let me tell you it's so good um, if you don't sign up, if you haven't signed up for my emails or you don't receive them, um, go to zeritswords.org and um, click on ZTV. And as you're watching the videos over there, they will, um, the little pop up will allow you to sign up for the email. The emails are good. I only send them out like once a month, sometimes twice a month. And they are long. I apologize for that. I don't usually mean to get in there, you know talking so much but then once I get started I'm like telling people all kind of stuff because my emails hit audiences that I don't connect with on a regular basis like some of the other people you know we're on social media together and we you know are are in contact more often but then when that email goes out it goes out to people who don't um, frequent social media as much and stuff like that so it's good it's good 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 and then there are often deals and and um, favorites and, and secrets and stuff like that in the emails as well. Um, okay, so today I'm talking to you about the perfect response to loss or calamity. And guess where I found it? In the book of Job. I was reading Job yesterday and the Lord just started speaking, 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 speaking. Such, such a good message. This is Job 1 and um, that little Holy Spirit, ding, 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 I've got some revelation for you, happened when I got to um, round about 
let's see, verse 20. But I'm going to start reading to you from before that, okay? I'm going to start reading to you at... 13. Now, on the day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans attacked and took them. They also slew servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands and made a raid on the camels and took them and slew the servants servants of with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another also came and said your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house and behold a great wind came from across the wilderness it struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they died and I alone have escaped to tell you so this man went through four major tragedies four um um you know major calamities big 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 losses here like he went from you know the mountaintop to the valley like in minutes you know like in a minute it seems and then this is the perfect 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 response this is what he says then job this is verse 20 job 120 then job arose tore his robe shaved his head and fell to the ground and worshiped there you go that's the perfect response to loss and calamity is worship it's right there. It's worship, 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 worship. If if you want to respond right, if you want to respond in a godly way, you respond to loss and calamity with worship. Actually, worship is the perfect response to anything. You know, if he's if you're doing good, worship. If you're not doing good, you worship. Worship, 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 worship. Why do you worship? Because worship takes you to the heavenly realm. It puts you in God's um, throne room for an audience gives you an audience and then you rise above circumstances and you overcome so that's the perfect 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 response to loss and calamity so those people who are out there pro protesting because they didn't get their way about who won the presidency you know if you're a believer and you're out there whining and crying and upset that trump is the president you 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 have decided that you're going to argue with god anyway and that's a dumb thing to do you know, you don't know everything that he knows. You don't see everything that he sees. You didn't create this world. You didn't create this nation. You didn't create the system of government. It's not yours. You don't own it. There's no reason for you to be upset about anything that goes on. You know, it's one thing if he put, um, you know, that holy fire or anger inside of you to change something. But when you didn't create something, you don't have the right to be throwing temper tantrums and all this stuff that it's not performing the way you want it to. Right. So in 21 and 22, it goes on to say, he said, naked, I came from my mother's womb and naked, I shall return there. And the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Through all this, Job did not sin nor blame God. All right. So just keep that in mind. If you're a believer. And you are out in the world throwing a temper tantrum on social media, telling people that you don't like Trump and you don't like this. You have set yourself in disagreement with the God of heaven. Why would you do that? If you're a believer, if you're not a believer and you're throwing a temper tantrum, we know that demons are, are controlling your life anyway. But if you are a believer and you're throwing the temper tantrum, you have set yourself in disagreement with the word of God because the word of God says you're appropriate response is supposed to be content in all circumstances and worship that's what you're supposed to be doing content and worship content and worship be content and worship be content and worship that's your perfect response to calamity and loss so again i'm somebody who speaks to believers so that's the, that's basically who i'm talking to if you are throwing a temper tantrum over who became president of the united states or anything else that you didn't bring into this world, you know, that you didn't create, you're out of, out of God's will for how you should be responding. You know, believers aren't supposed to be living in their emotions anyway. You you come from a different kingdom. Your kingdom supersedes this temporal stuff that's on the earth. And when you have that understanding, you don't get fezzed up about all this other stuff that's happening, you know, around the earth around the world. And listen, I can tell you, like, if you, if you read my emails, you know, the type of stuff that I've been going through in my personal life, um, since about July 1st of this year. So, um, I can, I can say this from personal experience, you know, 
I can say this from absolute personal experience, when you learn to live in that realm, because the Bible says that you're seated with Christ, but also you're hidden with him. You know, you, you can rise above anything that's going on down here because this is not the truth. This is a portion of the truth, right? But it's not the higher truth. And being a kingdom citizen, you're supposed to be seeking after, looking after, living the higher truth. You're not supposed to be down here wallowing in circumstances. That goes for healing. That goes for presidential elections. That goes for um, financial loss, deficit, layoffs, all of that stuff. You know, wars and rumors of wars. All of those things that are going on on the earth right now. Your citizenship is in heaven and that's where your focus is supposed to be. You're supposed to be ruling and reigning from that realm especially over the things that pertain to your life, you know? And it's so funny, all of these um, people that are so just just traumatized about this presidential election, they are, are, are a lot of them are in that, um, that generation that the Lord is trying to break the spirit of rebellion off of, and here they are cooperating with demons in full measure, you know? That's another thing, that's what the, the mature believers right now you know, most of us recognize that spirit of rebellion on that younger generation. And we're praying for that to be broken off of them so that they can be what God has called them to be. You know, speaking of um, all of this stuff, it goes along the same line on, I think it was Sunday of this week, which is like the, I don't know, maybe the 13th or the 14th of November, the Lord was speaking to me about carnal Christians. You know, we always just assume that carnal Christians are those ones who, you know, they, they just can't let go of some specific sins like sex outside of marriage or, you know, or, you know, getting drunk or something like that. But he was saying to me that, um, carnal Christians, like the believers who can't control their mouths on social media specifically, but who can't control their mouths in general. Like if you're one of those believers who you're constantly speaking negative, constantly speaking things that don't have anything to do with God's will, way or purpose, you know, you're a carnal Christian. That's like one of the, the basic things that you're supposed to be getting control of is your mouth. Because when you have the mind of Christ, you know, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you have the mind of Christ and the heart of Christ, you know, all of that, a lot of that other stuff, you know, that gossip and all those other things, they don't come out of your mouth because you don't live like that anymore because that's not who you are anymore. But if you, you know, you can't control your mouth and I say on social media because it's out there for everybody to see and it's just, you know, it's just there. If you can't control your mouth, you are a carnal Christian. You know, be self-control is the spirit that God gave you. You know, it's also a fruit of the spirit. So think about that. If you don't have any self-control, you're lacking in the fruit of the spirit. And it shouldn't be that way, especially if you've been a believer for any, any length of time. As soon as you become a believer, you're supposed to be seeking after the kingdom. Seeking after the kingdom. Seeking after the kingdom. Seeking after the kingdom. Right? You know, you're not supposed to be still living the old way, you know, when God comes into your life, he makes changes in you. You should always be desiring to get better, be better and do better, but you can't just stop at the desire. You actually have to put things into practice and change your habits so that you do become better, right? Yeah. Yeah. So think about that, you know, think about what you've been saying and if you're jumping on bandwagons and getting into arguments with other people and all that stuff because if you can't control yourself you know God's like hmm I thought they were my representative and yet they're showing out for the enemy what's up with that and we don't want that we don't want to be doing anything especially not publicly that is going to put us in agreement with the enemy because you know they record everything and then they're going to be like look I'm going to hold this against you forever 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 you know, because that's how they do things. And then we end up in these cycles where the enemy's kicking our butt and we're wondering how to get out. Well, you know, because God allows us to uh, have free will, we can choose to submit to Holy Spirit. And then when we submit to Holy Spirit, we can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that means we can say, I can control my mouth. I can control my social media posts. I can control, you know, the arguments that I get invited to, whether I take those invitations or whether I just turn around and go the other direction, et cetera, et cetera, you know? Yeah, so just think about that. But the perfect response to loss, calamity, joy, peace, sadness, sorrow is worship.
Worship of the Most High God, Yahweh, Elohim, the Creator. That's your perfect response. Perfect response. It will never fail you because the Word of God cannot return void. All right? So that's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you were able to get something out of this. And don't forget to visit me at ZariBanks.co. Lots of good information over there. Lots of videos over there if you want to watch the playlists and things that I have. Um, different teachings and different type of stuff. If you're looking for books and downloads, you can go to SupernaturalUbooks.info. From ZariBanks.co, you just click on the Supernatural U logo. And it takes you right there to the page where you can get um, those things that will that will bless you and prosper you. If you would like, I'm teaching a few people one-on-one -on -one right now for um, the 61 Days of Prayer learning some really good things, maturing in Christ, like supernaturally fast. I've been working with one lady and I was telling her last night, I was like, you have grown leaps and bounds in two weeks. Like you've learned stuff because we're working one-on-one. -on -one. I'm mentoring her one-on-one. -on -one. I was like, you've learned stuff, you know, in these less than three weeks in the month of November, you know, that, that it took me, like I was a believer like 20 years before I had understanding about because nobody sat down and taught me. You know, so if you are interested in having some mentoring so that you can grow up in your relationship with Christ, then um, go to zm7academy.us and register for um, the next cohort. It starts in January. You will be blessed, I could tell you. All right. I bless you in the name and the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ and take care.